going to talk about the comparison of 25 calibers and 6.5 calibers. One of the main reasons I'm talking about this is because I, not only because I have a high, high amount of experience with both these calibers, having built rifles for these calibers for many, many, many years. But one of the main reasons that I'm talking about this is, is because we have gotten completely off track here. A segment of people that just don't understand merits of various different calibers and cartridges. Got a group of people that think that everything all is all centered around ballistics coefficient. Well, ballistics coefficient is all fine and dandy for what it is. Now here's the reason I'm going to talk about these two situations. I'm going to pair, compare 25 calibers, larger case 25 calibers, to medium and larger case 6.5 calibers, and then say something about the largest 6.5 calibers. Now I'm going to point out the bottom line of this. Got a group of people that are bad mouth in the 25 caliber. Well, unfortunately, these people have very little experience with the 25 caliber, nor do they understand the situation. Now, several of my most favorite cartridges, the 25 watt 6, the 25 watt 6 Acme Improved, the 25 Gibbs, the 257 Weatherby. By the way, the 257 Weatherby was Roy Weatherby's favorite cartridge. Of everything that he designed, he killed a tremendous amount of game in Africa and elsewhere with a 257 Weatherby. Shooting some very large animals with a 257 Weatherby. He was doing this in a day when we just had average cup and draw type bullets. And then along came the Nasr partitions, and this made this cartridge even much, much better. There's not a bullet in 25 caliber better as far as the killing aspect than a 120 grain Nasr partition. The 115 grain Nasr partition is also very excellent. The 110 grain Acubon is very excellent. Now here's where I'm headed with this. Yeah, we don't have real high ballistics coefficients. Well, we don't need real high ballistics coefficients. If you go, if you go to, to actual drop figures and energy figures with 110, 115, or 120 grain nozzle partitions, and I'm talking about running these bullets right around 3250 to 3300 out of a 25-06. Yeah, you can get that kind of velocity out of a 25-06 throated properly with the right with the right make a barrel, 26 inches long, heart barrel will push those bullets at the velocities that I mentioned. Now, we'll step over to the, to the 264 calibers. And we're going to start, we're going to start basically with the newest cartridge that Weatherby developed here several years ago. The 6.5 rebated precision magnum. This is almost an exact duplicate on a somewhat different case than the 30 6 It has a 30 6 <coughs> rim size, but basically this is a this is an, a, a lengthened and an improved with a normal angled shoulder cartridge 
It's a close relative to the 284 Winchester as far as case head size goes. Now that's a pretty good it's a pretty good cartridge. It's a very well thought out cartridge. It gives good decent velocities. But the velocities are just no better than the 25 watt 6. Now if we choose the ideal bullets the ideal bullets for the cartridge that actually do the best job. These cartridges are deer antelope sheep type cartridges. They're not bigger game cartridges. However, you can kill most anything you want with one. Anyway, bullets between 120 and 130 grains in 264 offer no practical advantage at the velocities that they can be run at. Now these things can't be run at much over. You know the lighter weight, the lighter weight 120 weight bullet, the 125s, the 130s, the 120s. You can push these around 3300 and push the 125s around 3250. And anyway, when you get up to the 130s, now you're in about the 31, 31, 60 velocity range. Now taking these velocities into account, there's no practical advantage. Now, we're going to use a somewhat unfair comparison here now. We're going to jump up to the 26 nozzler in the 6.5x300 Weatherby. I first built my first 6.5x300 Weatherby about 27 and a half years ago. I still have it. I learned in about 250 rounds shooting 140 grain bullets that I had a fair amount of throat erosion. The rifle will still shoot reasonably well at 300 yards. Occasionally we got a bullet, a shot that's a little out of the group. This is indicating to me that this barrel is already starting to go. Now, if we're going to run bullets up there in the 3400, 3400 and perhaps faster, and by the way, I've run 140 grain bullets out of a 6.5x300 Weatherby up there in the 3600 neighborhood, 3550, 3600. Now, there's only a couple bullets couple of bullets out here, Mauser Partition, Barnes X bullets, and the Nosler Acubon bullet on 140, the normal, the regular 140 Acubon and the long range Acubon, that'll stand up to the, to the velocities. Now, this is almost a whole nother situation. And what do you have? You've still got a 140 grain bullet traveling. How most anybody can load any of these things only down there around 3,300 to 3,400 feet a second. And my particular rifle, I finished this rifle with a 29 inch barrel. Now I guess you can figure out somewhat why I got real high velocities. With 140 grain bullets, as I said, 35, 50, 3600 feet a second. Now, if we go out here at around six or seven hundred yards, out here around six or seven hundred yards, which is as far as anybody should be shooting anyway, and only under the very ideal conditions, we still don't have anything but. A deer antelope sheep type cartridges. Oh yeah, it'll kill elk, it'll kill other game too. Oh yeah, yeah. But if you want to use, if you want to shoot bigger animals, use a bigger caliber. Pick a 7x300, pick a 28 nozzler, something of this nature, 7mm SDW, and shoot heavyweight bullets. And I'm talking about 168 grain. You know, Acubon's 175 grain 
long range acubons, 175 nozzle partitions. And oh yeah, I know the nozzle partition doesn't have a big high ballistics coefficient. It doesn't need a big high ballistics coefficient. It does a wonderful job. I converted, I converted according to altitude many years ago with somewhat sage advice from Sierra. Converted the ballistics coefficient to the altitude where I hunt. And my ballistics coefficient is up there in the 600 neighborhood. Now, I proved this out according to drop figures, actual drop figures at the range and one thing or another. And I've taken a tremendous amount of animals, you know, all the way from in close, 40 yards, out there to one at about eight and a quarter. Many of them between five and six hundred yards and a few between six and seven. But the, the, the 6.5 calibers and the 25 calibers, you see, a 25 watt six actually improved will do basically in the, in the 6.5 Gibbs, built properly, throated properly, in the proper barrel with the proper twist rate. One in ten twist is all that you need. That cartridge will do virtually everything with around 10 grains less powder than the 257 Weatherby. You see, it's much, much more efficient than the 257 Weatherby. Now, these faster stepping cartridges aren't long barrel life cartridges. None of our high velocity cartridges are long barrel life cartridges. Most people don't have a clue what barrel life really is. To be honest with you, even in some of our normal velocities, we're not getting much over a couple thousand rounds. In instances that I'm talking about here, maybe a thousand rounds, maybe a little more. But anyway, I shoot both the 25 watt 6 act being proved, the 25 Gibbs, and I've had tremendous results shooting antelope sized game and an occasional elk with that with those cartridges and I use the three bullets that I mentioned the 110 Acubon the 115 partition and the 120 partition and I'm gonna throw another one in there 120 grain spear both the flat base and the boat tail they do a good job do a very good job if you ever shot a 25 watt six actually improve You'd flip head over heels to what it would do if you loaded it properly. And I'm talking about loading that, those two cartridges properly. The best powders, the very best powders, is Hodgson's H1000. I don't think that there's a better powder. It's a little bit easier on pressure. It doesn't have, you know, the <clears throat> all, all of a sudden, once in a while, there's a little pressure spike with something else something a little bit quicker burning, such as IMR 7828. But in my extensive test, and I built many rifles for 25 watts, exactly improved. I have a friend that I first built his first 25 watts, six exactly improved in 99. And he told me the other day, I can't remember the exact figure, but it's somewhere up there around 647 head of animals that he's killed with that rifle, and he's never had to fire a second shot. And the biggest animal that he ever shot with that rifle, with a 110 Acubon, was a 2,300-pound bull, bull, a big Brahma bull, that was marauding and causing a lot of problem on a ranch where he hunts, and the guy asked him to kill him. And he shot that bull in the armpit with a 110 Acubon and dropped that bull absolutely in his tracks at a couple hundred yards. He's killed hundreds and hundreds of hogs with his first rifle. He's got another rifle in that same caliber. And all total, 
All total, he's killed around 800 head a game with the 25 off 6 actually improved. Coyotes, wolves, deer, hogs, elk, that one bull. I built a rifle for a friend of this fellow's, and the fellow is no longer around because he was unfortunately killed in a plane crash. And he hunted all over Africa, all over Australia, and Alaska and Canada in just a few years. And he killed, he carried that rifle. He took along a 300 Weatherby as a spare rifle, but he couldn't stand the 300 Weatherby because it kicked so much. But he loved the 257 Weatherby. He killed grizzlies, the biggest Alaskan moose that you ever seen. Big, huge Canadian elk killed Cape Buffalo with that rifle. His favorite Cape Buffalo rifle happened to have been a 338 Winchester. But he killed numerous Cape Buffalo. Yep, one shot. Killed somewhere in the neighborhood of close to 400 head of game in just a half, half a dozen years with the 257 Weatherby. What I'm pointing out here, a cool shot. The guy was a cool shot. This friend of mine that I talk about that has a 225-06 Act Improve, he's a cool shot. And I'm a pretty cool shot. And I could kill anything on the face of this earth with one of these rifles if I do my part. People are really missing the boat with the 25 caliber aspect. The cartridges are well and capable killing antelope sized game and our energies you know out there at around 600 yards our energies with those with that cartridge compared to the like capacity cartridges in 65 they really don't deliver any better energy even when you step up to a 140 grain bullet you step up to a 140 grain bullet you pick up a, a little bit of a little bit of energy stretch your yardage maybe another 100 100 yards, 150 yards, but these are the real, honest to gosh, tried and true facts, information that I'm handing out here, just like I do every time when I talk about these things, because I know, I know what works. I don't buy into, I don't buy into the hype, and the other aspect is we've got a serious situation where people are using Irregardless of what the cartridge is, using light, thin, jacketed, target-type bullets to try to kill game. And this is why, in instances, we're finding some of these animals dead in the mountains somewhere, or wherever it happens to be, because the bullets, you know, didn't do the job, but eventually the animal died, which is unfortunate, and nobody recovered it. This isn't a good thing at all. But... Anyway, I wanted to try and bring everything to light here with these situations, with these two calibers. They're both desirable calibers, but you know, there's only just a slight, only just a slight advantage to the 264 in real situations. And we've had clowns try to say that, you know, the 6.5 Creedmoor is a good 800-yard elk cartridge. It isn't a good 250-yard antelope cartridge, let alone an 800-yard elk cartridge. These are, the, these are the real facts. These people are just spouting a bunch of nonsense, like to hear themselves talk. Doesn't have anything, doesn't have any idea what it's all about. Ignoring, or ignoring energy. And thinking that the ballistic coefficient is what does the job. It's the construction of the bullet and the actual bullet itself with the required energy, the necessary energy, at the distance that does the job with a properly placed bullet. And ballistic coefficient, as I've said before, and I'll say it again and I'll say it again at some other point in time, has very little bearing on anything, Pat. Until you get past 500 yards. And uh, you know damn good and well. 
just as well as I do, that most animals are taken inside at about 250 yards. And not at 800 yards, you see. These are real iffy, iffy situations. So, I guess that's just basically what I want to say about this. And I would never... I would never be without a 25 watt 6 actually improved because I think it's just the best improved cartridge that actually ever developed with today's powders, with today's bullets, and all the other aspects that we have in the shooting world today.